So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this light and I'm going to mount it on a bracket that looks like that on my roof rack. And I got these brackets from uh, Summit Racing and they're actually, there's the part number for you, they fit the FJ Cruiser roof rack perfectly. These are called ballast brackets. So if you're doing a search on the internet and you're wondering what these are, they're ballast brackets. And they look like in a package like that. And I use it to hold my jack on and my jack has not moved. And I also use them to hold on my Pioneer tools and they haven't moved. And I go four-wheeling and they they don't haven't moved a millimeter so I'm going to continue using these and I've got one mounted here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a wire through the tube through the tube here all the way to the front and in the front there I have my I have my um, wires inside the tube going down. I put a hole in my roof of my FJ and down the A-pillar, down into my engine compartment where I'm gonna wire it into a uh, relay. So this, my idea is with this light having two bulbs in it, 55 watt bulbs, I'm going to have one that's gonna be, I'll be able to switch it on as long as the park lights are on and uh, it'll turn on anytime and then the other one is going to be run through a relay and uh, run through my backup switch so when my backup lights come on i'll have uh, a much brighter light than what the factory came up with and my idea here what i'm going to do is is on a previous fj i had this apart already and i know that this is needs a hole in it to get my wire from here across and then down the pipe and I have a wire fish with me that I'm going to uh, use and I have to use the top tube and I have to uh, feed the wire down through the tube and get it down into the hole in the front. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen off all these bolts here and uh, just loosen the, the pads off. I'm not going to take the roof rack right off but I'm probably going to take my jack off just to make it uh, a little bit lighter. And then I'll uh, let you know when I get to the next stage of this. I'll shut the camera off. And um, when I'm ready to start running the wire through the tube and keeping the lights up, and I'll turn the camera back on. So until next time, uh, adios. Okay, so what I've got now is I got a fish, a wire fish here, shoved up inside of the boot of the roof rack going through the top tube around the top tube all the way back here I've got the back tube pulled apart on the driver's side and now I've got this extension cord. I'm not really fond of using an extension cord for automotive wiring, but the gauge is right. Um, and this cord had a bad plug-in on it. So when I've tested it and uh, I got continuity through it, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this cord. But um, the reason I wanna use this cord is because of the insulation. It's got a lot more insulation than um, just using automotive wiring. It's got extra protection and it's inside the tube and I won't be able to inspect it that often. So uh, I thought it'd be a good idea. And the other thing is that I'm gonna be challenged with is this is the connector that goes between the two uh, tubes and I'm gonna have to drill some holes here to run the wire through the connector but I'm only wiring the top tube so um, progress 
I got it all apart and jump up there and show you what it looks like. Oh, and the other thing is, because I read the forums all the time, it says these bolts right here always put the bolts back in as soon as you uh, as soon as you can you just move the pad or whatever the thing is flexible once you get it unbolted put those bolts back in because if you uh, lose the threads inside the roof it's a real pain to get them out anyways progress I'll uh, turn the camera back on when I get to the next stage bye now okay so now I've got the cord all the way through the tube and I've got uh, I put heat shrink tubing on the on the wires themselves and on the where it joins because it's just seal it up a little bit better so it doesn't have any weird kinks or anything in there and I'm gonna feed now I'm gonna feed the wire down through the foot pad and into the a pillar and out to the engine bay and then uh, I'll get the front end going and then I'll make all my adjustments for the back and uh, we'll pick this up in a minute so what I've done here is the joiner it joins the two tubes together for the roof rack. I've uh, drilled holes in either end. You gotta drill four holes. You gotta drill right through there and through there. And I've fed my leads through, and then this top goes on top of that. I'm clear of the screw holes there. Clear the screw holes. The wires aren't gonna get pinched. And then this just clips back on top of there like that. You slide it in, and then you uh, do your wiring that you need to. So that's going to work all right. Um, it's not what I expected, but um, I didn't think the legs were quite so long on this. But uh, it is what it is, and uh, we'll put this up. Get the roof rack going back together again. I got the wires all fed down inside of the cab. Just going to poke them through the firewall, and. Um, I'm on my way here to get in tying this job up. I'll uh, fill you in in a few more minutes. Bye. So, while I was working on my roof rack here, I got my lights set up. Uh, the wiring's all inside, the rack is all put back. Wires run down the foot of the roof rack, through the roof, down into the A pillar on the interior, and out comes underneath to the hood. It was really, really windy yesterday when I was working on this thing, and uh, I didn't think the video would be of uh, very good quality, so I didn't uh, pick it up. But finished product, backup lights. I don't have a switch yet, but um, it's, I don't have it. I've got a relay there, but the way I want to set it up is is um, a little bit convoluted, and I need to do a little bit more research on it. Now, all four bulbs are lit. Right now, I just have it under the under the hood. So yellow wire comes directly from the battery and then these uh, fuse blocks is the, the fused portion of the circuit and then from the fuse box to the relays. I've got relays for my bumper lights, relays for my top lights my roof lights and relays for my backup lights. These are two different styles of relays that I use. The numbers may be on different places, the studs on the bottom of the relay, but 
the numbers all mean the same so I have a guide on my electrical box there of all the numbers and where they go so I went on to the FJ Cruiser forum and I found out that this wire this red wire the yellow stripe controls uh, the backup lights so and the other thing is this right here is for the park lights so I'm going to um, have one side of my uh, lights my backup lights coming off the park lights and I'm gonna have the other side coming off of the of the backup light switch so as soon as I put it in reverse that uh, that wire once the switch is turned on will activate the lights on the roof facing backwards so thanks to the FJ Cruiser forum for uh, good information on there on all kinds of stuff you might want to do with your uh, truck but here we go we're um, had to take the panel off and uh, getting down to uh, wiring the relay we'll be uh, picking this up in a bit here talk to you soon so this is my console to my FJ Cruiser and um, as you can see for low here automatic transmission here uh, cup holder and this useless little void holds a business card and nuts and bolts and whatever very well but I don't really have any other use for it on my backup light switches I'm going to use a rocker switch like this and I've done my layout the most important part is get the layout done so now you can see uh, using the tools I have and do my best guess I will cut out where the X's are but I'm not going to go real tight to the line I'm going to be uh, 8 to 6 inch, inch from the line and I'm going to use my soldering gun here my weller and I've got the plastic tip on it plastic burning tip I can this gets hot and it'll burn right through that plastic like butter won't be a problem I've used it for this before and then I'll clean up with a file to get it close but I'm only going to cut within a couple of inches of the couple of inches um, like a sixteenth of an inch of the line or whatever and then I'll file it down with a hand file to get my switches to fit so it'll be a nice tight fit uh, flat file two different uh, graduations this is a uh, Finish, more of a finished edge and this is a little bit rougher let's, uh, let's clean this up a little bit and try test fit the switches got a ways to go yet You can still see my line. It's always better to, uh, when you do your initial cut with a soldering gun, is to. Um, or with other tool you're going to use, it's better to file to your line and it gets a much nicer finish than if you uh, cut too close to the line and make your hole too big and then you can see air between your uh, switches, switch where they sit, they rest in the hole. Another trick you can do too is you file on an angle like this so this is the back of the work and puts a taper on the plastic so that you can do fine tuning on the front 
and um, it makes for a much tighter fit. Okay, so I can see light now. So that's going to push in. Now I just have to work on getting my ends. I'll have a triangular file. It really cleans up the corners nice. It's for smaller work. Okay, I can see now, all I need to do is work on getting the end make a little bit longer and it's wide enough now, so it's just a matter of going down to my pencil mark here. Maybe my measurements were a little bit too exact because these uh, pins right here they have to fold back and click in or at least grab so it's just wide enough but I gotta keep going and make it a little bit longer I'll keep falling away on it that will go in there now so just patience lots of filing to make a really good job you gotta long ways to go on this one yeah I'm tempted just to actually flash up my um, soldering iron again and get a lot closer to the pencil line so I don't have to do so much filing because um, I think that's what I'm going to do. Take my chances on this one and uh, melt a bit more closer to the pencil line because the pencil line is quite accurate. Nice clean job. <clears throat> Switches are done. This is just, this could be temporary. I'm really thinking about putting a plate over top of here and then the wires just come up through this hole here. But or I'll just cut this out more. I'd like to put a more industrial plate in here and I might change the switches up to a different style of rocker switch. We'll have to see, but. It's uh, two different styles of switches, but this blue one is obviously a little bit fatter than the, than the red one. But we'll, um, we'll see how it turns out. I think this is going to be good. Nice fit, nice clean finish, no gaps. Beauty. Clip in there nice. They're nice and sturdy. This will, uh, this will be good. So I've got the console wired up. I'm just going to take a few minutes and show you here. 
but uh, how to get your console apart in this uh, Toyota FJ Cruiser. You, um, it's pretty straightforward. My console is not uh, the typical console you see because this here uh, PowerPoint I've added that after the fact. Got a, kind of a little demo on how I did that, but what you do is the um, FJ has a this is the Trail Teams edition, so the stick is a little different, but it's basically the same idea on both of them. There's a nut up here, and you spin this off. That slips off. There's a nut. And there's threads in here. Same idea with the transfer case. There's a nut on here. I just be able to crack that off. Might need to bring in a little bit of encouragement. And then once you have your uh, Levers off, this just pops out for your emergency brake. And then these cup holders, just remove those and just pull up and it's out. And then you just finagle it around to get it off. It's not too hard at all. So what I've done here is I have taken my wire and I've run it, tied it into an existing wire that's that's uh, there by the factory. I run it up and then I give myself a lot of length of wire and uh, shielded it. And uh, the wire on the outside, it's a ground wire and my ground wire is grounded onto a uh, body mount or uh, I know it's good ground I've tested it before I did this and then I wired my switches so that the only way that the uh, backup light comes on is either if the light is um, you know, your vehicles in reverse or if the uh, park lights are on so I can't walk away from the vehicle with the backup light on if the switch accidentally gets turned on. So you can see the underside of the wiring job. And I also use I'm using a common ground for the this here is the power point with the three cigarette lighters and the USB. So that's um, you can see how we did that. It's glued in there. It's not really pretty on the other side, but it sure looks good on the top side. And that's running and in this tied in here. And this is uh, tapped into my cigarette lighter. So it's on the same circuit, keys off, the device is shut off. So, so as you can see, the switch, the blue switch, set to on. And now I'm going to move the selector into reverse and the blue switch is eliminated. Put it into park and the blue switch goes out. So as soon as I put it in reverse, as long as that switch is on, the backup lights come on. And then I have the option of not having them come on in reverse. And then Turn on the park lights. And the lights are on. And the park lights are on. Shut off the park lights. Switch goes out. Turn the park lights on. 
So I might change this later too, so it's just on the key without the park lights being on. But my theory is that if it's dark uh, enough to want to run that light, then park lights have to be on, and then uh, so you can see what you're doing behind the vehicle, rather than just run around with them on during the day and uh, not knowing they're on. Anyways, the light did, from the switch is bright enough that it gets my attention, so it's pretty good where it is. Yeah, that concludes this video. I'll uh, I'll continue on with some more videos on the how tos of doing things. I'm going to do a tour of the truck here one of these days. It's uh, pouring rain today outside. Not a good day to be walking around the truck with a camera in my hand, but just wanted to finish this one up, show you that uh, what it looks like. And uh, yeah, please like, subscribe, and uh, share. We'll uh, do another video here soon. Talk to you. Bye.